Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahole, the second swing golf today at the Tour Van at Minnetonka, joined by Cam Root today. We've got a swing report video for you. It is the Mizuno STG drivers. Um, and this is the first time Cam's been on the YouTube channel, so we have to yep. introduce him a little bit. Cam, former fitter, now working in the merchandise team, very much a, an expert on all things golf clubs. Um, so Cam, tell the golfers a little bit about yourself, your game, um, maybe what the driver you're playing currently, and uh, uh, some, some background info for yourself. Yeah, so from Columbus, Ohio, uh, moved here two years ago and started as a fitter here at the Minnetonka location. I uh, played college golf at Marshall in West Virginia. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here. I play the uh, TS TSR3 driver, okay. uh, nine degrees. So kind of that smaller profile, uh, lower launch, lower spin driver. Yeah, that's kind of what this bad boy is right here. The STG from Zuno. Um, been very excited about this one because the there was the STG 220 and it had all kinds of weight tracks on the back and they've kind of they still got that with this driver, um, but they've optimized a little bit. This club is actually 440 cc, so a smaller club head. Um, they've also got a new club face material, their beta rich titanium. Um, so they've been doing a lot of different things with their club face material, you know, using stronger alloys, things that are a little bit different than elsewhere in the industry. But um, the other thing too about this is you. You know, I think a lot of golfers are watching this and they don't really think of Mizuno right away when they go to the driver category, but um, they have been quietly improving this area of their business for a while. And I think I'm really excited to see what they have here because STZ, STX, you know, those drivers have been really popular, but this is sort of that niche product for the really kind of unique, maybe lower handicap or high spin mm -hmm. or high speed player too. Mm -hmm. um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to have Cam hit some shots. Uh, what we're going to do with the weights is we're going to start with them both all the way forward. So on this back weight track, you can see there's kind of a fade sliding track and a draw sliding track. And we'll start with them way up and then we'll move them way back, hit some. So in your experience, Cam, using the sliding, you know, tracks, if you will, on drivers, there's been, you know, some tandem made drivers that have had some. Do you see a lot of difference with those in your past experience as a fitter? Yeah, I mean... I feel like for the higher handicappers, um, to be honest, maybe not necessarily as important. Mm -hmm. um, for that for that better player, the lower handicapper, I think it's more uh, beneficial for them. Um, me personally, I've never messed around with the sliding weights a whole ton, so I'm excited to see what it does. Okay, okay yeah, sweet. Well, let's, uh, you wanna get after it here? Yeah, let's, let's do it, shots. let's do it. It's a solid shot. Maybe maybe the face a tad open, but um, so and we should also clarify for the viewers the shaft in there right now is actually a Ventus Red TR six X. Uh, so um, one of the potential upgrade shafts that you have with this driver. So a couple swings in, Cam. Talk to me about what you see and feel and, you know, what are your thoughts on how that club, the aesthetic piece of it so far? Yeah, I mean, it feels better than I would have thought, to be honest. Yeah. Um, never hit a Mizuno driver before. Okay. Uh, never had a Mizuno club in my bag, actually. So really? all new to me, but yeah. uh, pleasantly surprised uh, after the first few here. Um, kind of getting a little bit of a higher launch, lower spin. Yeah. Um, so it feels good. Yeah. What's uh, your typical kind of shot shape or maybe even like distance too? Is this kind of keeping up with your distance that you're used to seeing? Yeah, I, typically a draw player, kind okay. of always been a draw player. And uh, as far as distance, yeah, I'm kind of usually in that 300 range, okay. give or take. So yeah. it's right there. Nice, okay. Yeah. yeah, we got a few more here. I'm curious to see, because obviously what we expect with the weights forward is maybe a tad lower launch and maybe a little more spin, yeah. or excuse me, a little bit lower spin um, with the weights forward, but we'll see if that turns out. Like that pretty consistency. You're kind of I like I can tell you're a draw player because you're starting that ball towards the kind of the right edge of the fairway about every time here. Yeah, just got to get one to draw back here. There's one. Look at that That's ball. One. Spin went down a little bit too. So you're just kind of as soon as that ball starts turning over, that spin will drop. See some tumble on it. Yeah, yeah, it feels good. So we've got four good balls up there. Here's our dispersion. So you kind of had the one, you maybe left the face a little bit more open than you wanted. Yep. Um, but these other three came back nicely into the fairway. And then if we bring up the sort of the table of numbers on average, 
110 club speed, 147 on the smash is pretty darn good. Um, and then that spin's kind of right in that money zone, right? I mean, as, yeah. as you know, when you were fitting, I imagine you were trying to get a lot of players, especially at this club speed, right into that spin range. Yeah, typically between, you know, 2,000 and 2,500 is kind of yeah. the sweet spot, obviously depending on launch and stuff like that. But um, yeah, super happy with that. Yeah, and then very consistent numbers too on distance. You know, your, your deviation on the carry was only 1.7 yards. And again, this is only four shots and then, you know, in a larger sample that might increase a little bit, obviously, but um, really good stuff across the board. There's kind of those numbers for a draw player there with the, you know, starting at about roughly five degrees with the path and the face, that ball will come back for you. Um, interesting here to 125 feet in the air. So I think we both kind of are theorizing that we move those weights back mm -hmm. and we will see potentially a little bit higher launch and, and maybe some more spin, but, yeah. but we'll see. But overall, I think with this setting, you know, you, you could probably go play this on the course. Yeah, and, this and would be, be the gamer right here. Yeah. 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 All right, well, let's move those weights back and we'll see what, what changes here. All right. I see the launch angle is already a little bit higher. Interesting, the spin is still a little bit down, <laughs> but again, only one shot in, I think, because that's the, the cool thing about this driver is all the adjustability. So yep. we're just testing kind of one possibility here. We're moving yep. the weights forward versus back. But with, with those tracks, you can have draw bias, fade bias. You can make it a super moderate driver with everything right in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things you can do. Plus, they have the, the hosel as well, which you can yep. play with lie angle and stuff. Here we go. There's a little bit more spin. Are you, uh, do you notice anything and feel that's different there or no? Like I, um, I, I, I've, I've know some drivers that kind of changes when you move things around, but yeah, personally, not really. Um, I haven't quite hit one in the center yet. Okay. So, Oh, with this setting or in yeah, general? with this setting, say, that, you had some good ones with the, the weights forward. So well, let's hit one. It's, it's bomb here. See that speed went up a little bit. Look at that. So the, the, okay, so the spin seems to be maybe similar or yeah. not moving, which is okay, but the launch seems to be a little bit higher. Well, again, when you're connecting, because that last one you didn't quite connect, you said? Right, yeah, not really, not really. But this, this smash on this one's definitely a little higher, so. Yep. Yeah, there's the draw. Yeah, I like that. A little I, bit higher I imagine launch. you'll take that ball flight, that, that swing every time. Yes. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Try to get that it, one up in the air a little it bit did, more. It did, it did come back though. Like it's still clearly, yeah, I can, you're very consistent with where that ball starts and it either stays relatively straight, ends up on the right side of the fairway or it draws back to the middle, which is. Yeah, um, kind of right now the miss is just a little bit right hanging it out there, but um, mm -hmm. typically keep it in front of me there, so. Yeah, so we've got, um, I guess we got five with the weights back. We got four with the weights forward. And, you know, um, so we got a, a decent sample, I suppose, with, with each. And we have some minor differences. Um, here are all the numbers. So spin goes up slightly, launch angle up slightly. Um, I'm trying to see what the height, I mean, look at that, 126 <laughs> to 125. Um, steeper landing angle, just a tad. So, and I think, would you agree? I mean, if we were to, again, if we had the time to hit like 20 shots with each and you, you know, I don't want to wear you out or anything, but uh, we would probably see those differences expand a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think after, you know, a bigger sample size, you'd probably see a little bit higher launch, a little more spin with the weights in the back, um, maybe a little more carry. Mm -hmm. um, first with the weights forward, probably a little lower launch, less spin, maybe a little more distance. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably, I mean, again, we're, y y that's the cool thing about this club though, is you'll be able to like, you the viewer can come in and get fit and try all of the different, you know, there's, you can put both weights on one side even and do a strong draw bias or fade. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of possibilities here. Um, so all we did here was go maybe essentially move the center of gravity forward and then move it back you know, a little bit to kind of add maybe some MOI on the, with the weights back, um, add some launch and granted small sample size numbers, slightly tiny, you know, like bore it out a little bit. But um, talk to me about just have, after hitting, you know, these nine, 10 shots here, mm -hmm. your kind of impression as, you know, impression of testing that club. 
um, the playability it might have for players that are maybe low handicapped out there. Yeah, I mean, I love the profile of it, a little bit smaller profile, so it fits yeah. the, you know, the player's eye. Um, and it feels a lot better than I would have expected, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, I've never really given Mizuno a shot, yeah. so um, happy to be able to test and kind of get a feel for uh, something that maybe could go in the bag one day. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's it's they're sneakily becoming a, an option a lot more in the in the woods category. Um, I know if you haven't yet, we've also got um, the STG Fairy Wood video. I think as of this filming, we're going to film it next. So, um, but if that's on YouTube channel, go check that out as well. But um, the STG is is a sneaky. It's not talked about a ton. I don't think Mizuno even promotes it a ton. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be one that. I think golfers of kind of in in your caliber, I think in my caliber too, like players that are have some speed, players that are pretty skilled, but you know maybe want to tinker a little bit or you know that type of thing. Um, you're gonna like that driver. So uh, let's uh, we've got our testing completed here. Let's let's wrap it up with our with our final thoughts here. All right, so Cam, we completed the testing. Um, and so we kind of want to wrap up here and just give a couple of key takeaways for the viewers maybe looking at this driver as a possibility for their bag. And so I think after the testing, we saw some consistency. I think it was very easy for you to just step in there, right? And like you said, you'd never hit a Mizuno driver before. Mm -hmm. And with whether the weights forward, weights back, you were able to kind of peer your draw out there down the fairway every time. Yeah, and I feel like with the weight adjustability, uh, for me personally, I kind of like the weights in the back, so I'm still able to maintain a lower spin, higher launch, but get some of that forgiveness. Whereas mm -hmm. with those weights forward, you saw the one shot went off to the right, maybe a little bit more than it would have with the weights in the back. Right, that's another thing to consider is if you weight move center of gravity forward, weights forward, typically it's a little bit less forgiving, or the, maybe your misses are a little bit more, I guess, exaggerated. Uh, mm -hmm. So kind of wrapping up here, we'll, we'll I'll ask you the, the the key question, right? I mean, who is this club for? When Mizuno made this club, what type of golfer did they design it for? Yeah, the, the lower handicap for sure. Um, kind of that more skilled player that likes that smaller profile. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like we've been saying, lower launch, lower spin. Um, and as you can see, it can still get out there. Uh, you know, I would say probably similarly to you know the Titos and the Pings of the world. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it yeah. packs a punch for sure. I think mm -hmm. we saw that today, and, and you were very efficient with the way that that ball was jumping off that that new beta rich titanium face. So, um, I think the verdict is that I mean, you approve of this thing, right? I Stamp do. of approval. So, I do. Uh, the viewers, uh, if you're in the market for a new driver here at the end of 2023 or into 2024, you like that adjustability, you like the low spin, check out the Mizuno STG. Schedule that fitting. One of our experts will take care of you. So, uh, Cam, thanks for making your debut on the channel. Really well done. Yeah. And uh, again, golfers, the STG, stamp of approval from us.